All right, everyone, we're going to get started with uh, today's Career Pathway User Group for January. We want to just welcome everyone back uh, from the, the break. The seems like the never ending winter right now, but it's only been a few weeks. Um, so we're going to uh, have you sign in if you haven't. You can check out the link there um, that's in the chat. And we're going to get started on our agenda. So our, our first uh, part of that agenda is our welcome and introductions. Uh, my name is Bill Rose, and I'm with the NIU Illinois CTE Project. Uh, we work in collaboration with ISBE on the um, different projects going on in CTE. And so um, our Career Pathway User Group um, is a group that basically is um, going through um, a lot of the items re related to the Career Pathway endorsement. And so uh, with us here today, we have Jason Klein, um, who I'll let him introduce himself, and then Heather, go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Hey, everybody, Jason Klein. Uh, Heather is the star of our show today, so when we hand it over to her, we're going to skip right to her section. We did just drop the slides in, and so you do have some uh, slides there for your reference, but we are going to skip right over those today to get to Heather's section. And uh, to follow up while Heather's introducing herself and kicking things off, if you can drop into the chat who you are, where you work and what you do there, that would be that would be awesome. Heather, it's all yours. Hey, good morning, everyone. Heather Lucan, Illinois State Board of Education. Um, also the one who kind of oversees the CCP, <laughs> has been working diligently on these items. Um, so I'm very excited today to um, uh, show you the, the new platform in iOS, and I just want to do a couple updates on plan statuses and things like that, being very uh, transparent with everything. Um, so we currently have 152 districts that have done um, an application, sent an application for their plans to be reviewed for FY24. Um, and again, within those 152 districts, um, some districts have multiple plans. So it is a time consuming process, but I've been chipping away at them. I think I'm through 48 of those 152 districts um, and providing feedback. And some of the concern I know that I've had is, hey, Heather, our plans were approved last year. Why are you sending them back this year and saying that you need to make changes? So the, the reason for that is not not to be a stickler on things and say, oh, okay, it doesn't work this year, or that you need to change a lot of information. I am working to make sure that your plans are in alignment with not only the new platform, which you'll see today, and how that is input um, and the requirements that you'll see within that, but also that you're in alignment with the rules. And as you know, the rules went out for public comment, and um, we've taken all those comments and, and, and had a look with those, and so those will go out officially here to the board. Um, I don't know when that will that will happen, but we're making sure that everything is alignment so that when you transfer your plans into IWAS, you've got all the, all the information in there, they'll be approved, and they will stay approved until you go in and tell me that you're going to make changes on something. Maybe you need to add another team-based challenge. Maybe you need to change the course name or whatever, but that is the goal to make sure that they are in alignment moving forward, because as we know, the requirement for all districts is to determine if they're going to issue CCPs by July 1st, 2025. So that 150, so 152 districts want to issue them for this year. Um, but I also, on top of that, there are roughly 285 districts who have done an application saying that they plan to uh, issue endorsements, maybe just not for FY24, but moving forward. So we're trying to make this as streamlined as possible uh, and, and make sure that everything is in alignment and that for those of you who have the plans and are going, you can be kind of those leaders on, on what this is going to look like and, and the requirements and so forth. So I just wanted to put that out there before, before we start into the display of everything. Anyone have any questions on, on that type, on anything regarding that? Okay, then we will move forward. <laughs> you'll, get see, you'll get to see a lot today. I'm gonna to show you um, different components, both within uh, a district level view, and then also what you'll see from the ISB view. Um, and I'm going to copy the information right of the, um, the PWR platform. 
so it's it's a it's one of the plants that Jason and I actually created in there to do as a demo, so he could he could get some information too and see what that looks like. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you how that would transfer right into the platform, which I haven't done that part yet. So that'll that'll be we'll we'll learn that together as we go. Um, but I think here, if I just share that. Can you see it? Are we, okay, yeah, still gave me a thumbs up. Okay, so uh, this is this is currently just in, in our testing mode. Let me move some of this out of the way so that I can get access to all my stuff. Okay, so this is what um, you will see when you log in. Now, in in this example, <laughs> they just put me in a random district. So, but this is this is what you will see when you first log in to um, the, the CCPE um, system within IWAS. This welcome page, um, I have the ability to, or ISB has the ability to, to edit, and you'll see that when I go into, uh, from my view. So if I need to put any kind of notes, uh, input, or you know, announcements or so forth, that will be on that front page as it goes. So this is just an overview of the requirements. Um, and that uh, you know, when the, when ISB will review the deadline for them, and then here, as you know, the requirements moving forward for 27, 29, 31, and so forth. Okay, so that's just your that's just your home page. Um, and then when we start here, the first thing that districts need to do is they have to before they can even start to build their plans. They have to add their individual career plan. Uh, that is a requirement, and that is something that um, you will see um, once you submit that. Then I'll show you what what triggers on my end or on ISB's end so that um, we know that you're ready to build. When this opens up for July and July 1st of this year, 24. Because then that again, that's a requirement for them to determine if they're going to issue. You have all decided. From, that, that are on here have decided that you're going to issue endorsements. So that's how you'll start that. The opt out option will not be available until July 1st of 24. Um, and then once that happens, there'll be another, if they decide they're either going to do the career plan, which indicates that they're planning on issuing endorsements, um, or they're going to do the opt out and then they would provide evidence for the opt out as well. So that's how that, that will look um, for this. But for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and do the career plan. So these are the exact questions that um, we have put in within the PWR platform. Uh, the guidebook uh, actually has the, the information here. So um, a lot of you have been uploading a document that answers these questions. And I do believe, I'm gonna flip over to the current PWR. So you can see You'll get to get a little sneak peek here of, of everything that, that I see. Um, let me find our pretend district. There it is. All right, we're going to go with the engineering. And right here, we have our sample individual plan. Oh, I forgot. I'm going to have to open it that way, too. Hopefully that'll open for us. I should open that earlier, sorry. My apologies on that. Okay. So first question, Jason was very thorough in this. <laughs> I am simply going to copy pop back over to the career plan and paste. So I'm going to do that. Nope, let me go back to my document. I'm going to do that for all those questions. You can see I'm just putting everything in. And 
last one. There we go. So all of that is in. Um, you have the option to save. If you started the process and then you wanted to go back to it, you would hit save. Or you can do save and submit, which we're going to do. It, it triggers this. Um, I really need to put that out there. Okay. So now you'll see that uh, the status for the career plan is submitted. You cannot move forward within the platform until that is approved. Um, so what we'll do now is I'm actually going to, um, you guys, I need to get that on there. I'm gonna log out um, of that. I'm gonna go into the, um, hold on, let me log out of this one. Now I'm going in as uh, is the admin. And so on my end, um, you'll see here's where I can add uh, information to the, the pathway endorsement for the home page. And up here I have my approvals. And so here's the request. This is the one that we just did um, for Mattoon. So I can view this, read all of the information that is there. If there uh, are components missing or if it does not address the questions that are required, I can put feedback in here. Um, I'll just put that in there for now, and then I have the option to approve or decline. So I'll hit approve, uh, and then you can see, I can see the, the status of that. So now, I'm going to log out of that one, and I'm going to come back in <laughs> to ours. Well, maybe I won't because it's not let me. There it is. Okay. Okay, so now you'll see that I have the option to add a new pathway and that the status here is approved. If for some reason I had declined that, you'll see that it's, it would say declined and you would, can go in and make those, um, based on the comments that are down in the box, you can make those adjustments to that and resubmit. Um, okay, so we're gonna start adding a new pathway and all of your pathways, all the plans that you build will be in this table here and their status for that. So this first page that we have is all about the district information. So this is going to be pre-populated coming from EPS, the Entity Profile System. So that information is there. You do have the ability to change the contact name here. So this would be your district contact. So that that person that would be responsible for, and it could be the superintendent, but that, that person that would be responsible for inputting the information or who we would reach out to if there was a question regarding their pathway endorsement. So that's what this page is for. This again, you have the option here, just district information and as well as the pathway endorsement um, contact. So we'll save that and we'll move on to the first component. So here you have your endorsement area. And if we remember, if we're going back to this one, we are under manufacturing. I'm gonna actually go into this plan here, so that'll be easier for us. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna click manufacturing. This is going to be engineering. Um, I'm hoping, oh, I forgot to, put, to get that part. Let me go back here. My apologies on this. I think we had that. Yeah. So you would put in your summative statement. I don't know if we've got that for this one or not, but you would put in your summative information. So again, broadly describe the, the labor um, workforce needs for this. So I am just going to put in something so that... <laughs> There, so we've got that in there. I'm not saying that that's what you should put in. That's not going to cut it, guys. <laughs> but that's just for the, this purpose, so you can see. If I try to, um, <clears throat> if I try to go next, so I haven't hit save and I hit next, it should have triggered. <laughs> and of course, it's not. It should have triggered um, a, a thing saying you've got to save this in order to go. So that's crucial because if I go back to this, you can see it's gone. So you've got to make sure, and this is something, again, we, we know we have some things that need to be fixed within this, um, but our IT team just hasn't had a chance to get that done yet based on, I was working on this last night very late trying to get things done on this. So <clears throat> down here, 
Um, we have a listing. So if, as you know, in the PWR, it's very confusing once you get to uh, that part where you have to do the institution and the program and the credential because multiple um, users, and this is no fault of anyone's, but multiple users have created, for example, College of Lake County. They've created that institution. So there's multiple listings of institutions, multiple programs. Sometimes you click on the wrong one and your programs don't show up and the credentials are, are incorrect. So we streamline this for this. <laughs> Every post-secondary partner. So you can see here, it's College of Lake County. So <clears throat> you can just right there. In. Now this one, you're actually going to um, put this in yourself. So you do not have to do the program. It is just what that credential is going to be. Or you can put the program in. You could say mechanical engineering, or you could say an associate in applied science with mechan mechanical engineering. Sorry. Um, but what we're looking for there is specifically that credential. So Got that, I'm gonna add the credential. So now you can see it, so you can add multiple partners. Um, make sure you, you do hit the add credential on there, and then we're gonna save this page. And it tells me that everything has been saved. So that's the first component. Now when we hit next, now we're going to our courses. Um, and can this I, can here- I, Can oh, I jump yeah. in here for a couple sure. of questions that have come in? Sure. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, Kristen's question is not she's not seeing the listing in Iowa yet. And Kristen, that's because it hasn't been released just yet. We'll we'll talk about that at the end. You're a few weeks away from from seeing this released, but this is exactly what you will see released in Iowa. And obviously, that will be both communicated by ISBE and certainly in Bill will send out a, a either in a weekly message or. If it's available on a Thursday, Bill will send out a message to the user group on a Thursday um, <laughs> to give you an extra message on that. So that's um, that's one thing in terms of of when you will see it. Um, the um, couple other questions I want to bop in here with um, Heather, can you have more than one district contact? Can we talk about that here real quickly? Um, at this time, no, it is just one district contact that is there. So there will be different levels of access. Uh, so superintendents will have first access to that. So they oversee, they can assign others to um, have access to this at what they call the district admin level, which would allow them to complete um, a, a, a pathway. So that is a possibility for them to do that, to, to enter the, the data in here. Um, can we also go back all the way out to the beginning and show the those first couple of steps? Yep, yep. Sure. So yep. at the very beginning, everybody, as Heather showed us, you have to complete that individual career plan, and then it's got to be approved yes. uh, by ISB before you can go on. Now, once that's approved, Heather, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that is then approved for multiple endorsements, I can then, yes, then go yes, in. You, that is that is a one one and done. I guess I would call that. So <clears throat> the way you will get to the home screen is through the IWAS system listing. So once it's available, you will ask you will you will add the system to your set of systems listed in IWAS, yes. and that goes through when, the district level approval process. Yeah. It's yeah. it's in this area here. Now I'm in I'm in QA here, but um, usually you have an option down this, where you can right add. There. Want to sign up? Want to sign up for other systems? It's that yeah, right there. Yep, right there. Yep. And so, and sorry, again, I'm trying to know, move you guys around. <laughs> on my know, screen so I can see it. I know for some, there are some people in here, and I'm going to wrap up the questions now with one more from Amy, who references another IWAS uh, system. And so some of you in here have have plenty of IWAS experience. There's others of you who haven't been in IWAS at all yet. And so uh, what we will try and do is make sure you have those first couple steps screenshots of yeah. Of the, what to do for those first the few guide, steps. The guidebook that you will have that accompanies okay. this will have screenshots and walk you through the exact process. 
And then uh, finishing up the questions for now, so Heather can keep taking us through. Is there a printer friendly option to capture the whole submission when it's done? Um, the IWAS EGMS grants had had that as an option, so you could like have that as your summary when you were finished. I will find out about that. At this time, I don't believe so, but I will find out about that if we and can make that an option. The last thing I'll say is keep throwing questions in. We're not going to get to all the questions today because we want we will pause a couple more times sure. probably to try and do some sure. questions, but we want to make sure we get through this um, and then we will come back and answer questions and and we will have all the questions in the chat. So typing and, questions into the chat yeah. is just wonderful. So that's great because that also that also assists me in knowing what changes I need to make. What what I need you know to make it. I want this to be as streamlined as possible for everyone and as user friendly as as it can be for everyone. So um, please go ahead and put those in there. And like Jason said, if we can't answer questions or, or whatnot, or even if it's just a comment about something, absolutely, I, I would take those um, in, in a heartbeat, really, honestly. Um, so actually, that was a good chance to pause because as you can see here, we've started it and it's in draft status now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and edit that so that we can see. So it takes you back to that, that front page again. Um, I want to show you one neat feature here. This last page, the submit and review, if I click on that, it can it shows me that I've done the district information, I've done the overview, and I'm missing all these components. So when we get into this course sequence, which is next, um, if I don't have the total semester work equaling four or the credits, the early college credits equaling six, it will come back as incomplete. And you cannot submit your plan. You can see now I cannot click this until all of this says the validation says complete. So that's one way if you started to work on one and you've got it saved in there and then you come back later and they're like, oh, what? I don't remember where I left off. This last page will show you that. All right, I'm gonna hop to course a sequence here. So <clears throat> this is a drop down based on, so all you would really need to know for your course codes, if we go here, um, back into this, you can see here that, oh, look, we didn't, we didn't do course codes on that, Jason. <laughs> We've got 21 um, is the first start. So when I go back into here, I can find engineering technology. And then the course we wanted was intro to, uh, intro to, to uh, engineering. You can just start typing anything in here. Yeah, there it is. So, and it'll give you only those that are for 21. So it's not gonna give you the whole list, okay? So uh, whatever you select here, and then it, it uh, automatically generates the, the uh, course name for you for there. The local course name is optional. If you want that in there, you can put that in. If you don't, you don't have to put it in. How is this offered? We're gonna go with a regular period course. So there's your three options. Sorry, I went through that really fast. Regular period, block schedule, extended time. For those of you who um, have programs or have courses that are offered at a career center or at a community college and the students are there for a block of the day, so two or three hours of, of the day um, that, you know, the equivalent to two or three class periods or, or more, per perhaps, you're going to want to click extended time. And when you do that, you have to select two or more semesters. So once this gets updated, the one won't even be an option for you. This helps to identify those courses, as we've talked about, um, the availability for a senior student who takes an extended time course uh, at a career center or a community college that would allow them to, it, it kind of, I don't want to say overrides, but it allows them to, the two, year, the two years or four semesters, that may be condensed into the one year. So within that one class their senior year, they're getting the equivalent of two years, four semesters. And uh, in addition to that, they've got their six early college credits. So that is why for that last page to verify that it is uh, indeed, and so we'll have more you know, explanations on that, on how to enter that, but that's the workaround that we've got, and I don't really want to call it a workaround. That's the way this is going to function for those that have that extended time. So that if I were to look at the table at the bottom and I only see one course there, I would expect a, um, a description that says, well, it, it's one course, but it, it meets the criteria because it's extended time and so forth. So um, 
we'll just go ahead and just do one and I'll do extended time and I'll do four semesters. It's the equivalent of four semesters. Then you have the location at which the course is delivered. And so for here, I'm going to say the Career Center. And yes, it is early college credit. So now we get down into this part and I believe maybe we've got one here. Um, yep. So I can, again, if I want, I can I can copy and paste that into here, the course code, the course name, I'm just copying and pasting now, and then what type it is. So it's dual credit, uh, and it's worth um, three, but that's going to not allow us to submit this, so we're going to say six for this one. Uh, and the typical grade offered, so you have multiple options here. Just 9, 10, 11, 12, or it could be in either one of these. So we're going to go 11, 12 for this. So now we're to the course description. Um, and this is going to be, um, so we don't have the course description on this one, but we do have the answers to the question. So I'm going to grab this response and put it right here. There we go. And then I'm going to take this response that is already put in and place it right there. Okay, so those are answering the questions, the course description, uh, I don't remember what we called this one. So <laughs> this one you could actually get probably from the uh, ISB if you wanted the course description there, that would, that would work for there. I'm just gonna put in a, uh, something simple there that's not, that would not actually qualify for that. But you've got all your fields, filled out um, if you were trying to add a course, add the course down to the table. So here's your table at the very bottom where it's going to show your list of courses. So I'm going to add the course and there it is. Um, and so you can put, you build up your courses. So if I wanted to add, I think we've got one more that's on here. If I wanted to add um, an additional course, I could do so. And then it would show up uh, along the bottom. So, but just for time purposes, I just want to show you what that actually looks like. So your listing is there. You can edit that. You can delete it if you want to start from scratch and, and go all through it. Um, but I'm going to hit save. It tells me that everything's been saved. And if I go to the submit and review page again, it's going to show me that it's complete because that means that I've got, so you can save the page and it could show, come back up and say that it's not complete because you don't have the four semesters or you don't have the total credit. Um, so that's just something to be mindful of. So our next component is going to be the professional learning experiences. And you can see here, they're broken down this way. So it all falls under the one um, drop down. So career exploration activities. Um, Whoops, let me move this out of the way, go back to here. What do we have over here? We've got the engineering, so I'm going to copy this and put it here. And then again, I've got my description, which I'm going to put right here. And partner name, I don't know we you want to have a partner name, but I'm just trying to think of, well, anyone want to give me a partner name that we could use for the engineering pathway in this area? Uh, how about, um, how about? Uh, Jackson Enterprise. Thank you. What was that, Baxter? Jackson Enterprise. Oh, Jackson, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got that. So I'm going to say that this is not, an intensive career exploration activity, and I'm going to add that activity so you can see what that looks like when we when we get down here. So uh, again, if we go back into here, we've got another one, the career field trips. So I'm going to add this. Oops, maybe not. <laughs> career field trips. I can I can double that. I'm going to pull that description. We're going to use the same, and I'm going to say no on that as well, and add that. So now they're both listed here, and I'm going to save that. 
And now I've got my two. You can add up to, I believe you can add up to six um, on, on this one, but you've got your two added. And if we go and look at submit review, again, it's going to show that it's completed for that activity. So now we'll hop back down to team-based challenges. Very, very similar format, except when we get to the competencies. So for team-based challenges, first thing we've got is this. We're going to call it that. You're going to take your description. You do not need to pull in your competencies. A lot of you have your competencies listed in the PWR platform, and that's fantastic because I need to see that, obviously, for this, for this part. Um, but I'm going to take this description and put it in here. And then when we get to the... Um, uh, again, you can do um, a maximum of up to two competencies for both the technical, and you'll see here that based on your first selection, so manufacturing, it will show that specific pathways competencies here. So, for example, if we had picked uh, human and public services, it would show the human and public services here. So, uh, you don't have to go searching for them, um, maybe to get the explanation of them or the definition of them, you would need to have that by, but you will not have to um, type this in. So for this, we have process design and development, which is right there. If I wanted to select one more, I'm going to hold down the control key and click another, but it will not, I don't think it'll, it will not let you go past two. Okay. So, but we know for this one, it's just the process design and de development. And then we did teamwork and conflict resolution right there. Okay. And then the final product description, which could be in here. We'll just do, we'll just do a um, presentation. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, and the partner name, I believe this was Baxter. So we'll go back. And we're going to add that to our list down here. Okay, so that's how that one looks. And if you if you know if you uh, take a look at this and I hit save, I've got that in there. If I go to this back page, the submit review page, you'll see it's telling me it's incomplete um, because there's a minimum of two required, and so we don't have two in there. So we'll just really quickly here add another. And this one, same process. We're going to pick, I'm just going to pick some here that I think would work. We'll go with two on that one. Okay, I'm going to add that. Now you'll see them both down in this area. They're both there. I'm going to hit save. And it's changed and they've changed. And if we go and look, now we are complete with the team based challenges. And then our last component is the career development experience or internship. So again, I'm going to pull that information from our already created um, document here. So that's what we're going to call that. So we'll have to break this down a little bit more rather than the description. Um, so, but I'm going to, I'm going to pop it in there actually. There's that. Uh, the name of the partners, which would be so. And the this this part here will actually be removed. Um, you will not have to identify competencies for your career development experience. So that's going to be a different prompt, and they just didn't have a chance last night to, to remove that for us. So in order to get this to, to function, I'm going to have to pick some. So I'll do that. Um, how many hours are assigned to this work? So again, you've got the hours that you have, you've got the 20-40 split or a 30-30 split, so you can add two different experiences here. 
they want to know if they earned course credit for that. So if this is embedded into one of the courses, you would hit yes, and you're going to say which course that is um, that they can, that they're going to receive that credit for. So it's the same function within the course sequence. You're going to, you know, pick, pick this, and then you would have all the options for, or if I do the manufacturing, maybe we can do, maybe it's this one, the workplace experience, and that's where they're getting the, those hours. Um, if you click no, then these are grayed out and you don't have to fill that out. And then just the question as, as to whether or not they were paid and we'll say yes on that. And then I'm gonna add it and it drops down to here, okay? And then I'm going to save that page. And now when we go here, you can see that everything is complete and the button has now turned blue. And so you can hit uh, submit plan, which we're gonna go ahead and do. Are you sure you wanna submit? And you say yes. And if we go back to um, if we go back to our home page, then you can see here that the status is that it is submitted. And all you can do here is just view that. Uh, you will not be able to make any changes to that once it's submitted. Any questions on that before I show you what the next step would be as far as on ISBE's end? Anything in the chat? No, nope, we're good. Okay. I have a quick I have a quick question, Heather. Sure. Sure. So if um as you pull down, students get you click yes, students get credit for the CDE, but it is not listed as say uh, a manufacturing. It, it's in the manufacturing uh, pathway, but it's listed in a for our smaller smaller schools listed as a general. Um, internship class. I didn't see that option in the pull down. How how were you? If they're getting course credit, you would just need to match it to the course code that they that they would be get. You know, when they're uploading their courses information into SIS, whatever okay. that course code is, it would match that. So you're okay. right. It may not be. It could be like a 22, which is like a miscellaneous. It could be under that. So it's just however you've coded it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sure. No, that's a, that's a good question. I know that um, that there's been some questions regarding whether or not you can use the course where they're earning their 60 hours as part of the courses within the course pathway. And yes, you can use that. Um, remember, the requirements for the course path pathway is that it has to be two years, four semesters. Again, we have that 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 option for the career center, but it has to be two years, four semesters, and then six early college credits. And they have to answer those questions. So obviously, uh, a course that is an internship, um, or, or the, and they're actually doing internship within that field, that would be, you could put that as one of your, your courses within the course sequence. I just want to call that out. I think there was some um, maybe misunderstanding on that part um, when I was just thinking about the, the rules and so forth. So um, I just want to call that out. Can I ask a question too? It's Michelle Napier. Um, sure. When you went and did the career development experience, yeah. and I'm yeah. just trying to think there may be opportunities as we're developing our programming. I'll go that ahead. They, okay. Oh, the CDE. Okay. Yep. Right. Yeah. Here. The CDEs. So sure. what if a student, like maybe in a path like manufacturing, it's in a class embedded or they have a paid work experience. We can't have both as an option under the CDEs. Can you put multiple? Yes, yes, you can put multiple. Yes, because quite, okay. quite a few of you actually list multiple options for that student. So yes, um, and I see it a lot within um, uh, the, the education pathway. They'll have you know a 30, a 30 hour one that's in one location <clears throat> or perhaps a 30 hour one that's with elementary and then a 30 hour that's with secondary, you can add them here. Yes. You would not okay. be able to add, I'll have to, and I'll have to test it, but you, I don't believe you'll be able to add more than two. However, but at least I could put a course and then I could do paid work experience. So mm -hmm. either one of those would qualify. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Because um, your plan that you build, 
is basically um, showing ISBE what the options are for the students. And then it is on the district to ensure that they've met, like you said, they have those two options. So it's on the district to verify that they've done one of those two options. And so when we when we talk a little bit about the course sequence, and that kind of leads into a great thing, so thank you for that question, Michelle. <laughs> um, keep in mind that the courses that, that we expect to review are going to be those courses that the students can take that would fulfill the requirements of that two years, four semesters. So could there be more than just, say, say they were all semester classes, could they be more than four classes that you provide in here? Yes because if that student has the option to take this class or this class, but they both meet the criteria, you're gonna to wanna to list those here, okay? So it is just the courses that are specific to that pathway. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the, uh, let me log out of this. <laughs> let me log in here and show you um, what happens next. So now I'm going to look at pathway requests. Oh, there's the one that we just submitted. I'm going to view this. Now they are changing this um, around a little bit, but I'm just going to show you what it looks like on my end. So it's basically uh, the same thing. So all of the information is here. What they're going to do for me, rather than putting it here. <laughs> so here I have the um, option to submit feedback. And like if I say declined on this one, I can provide feedback specific to why the district information would have been <laughs> declined. What they're going to do, however, what they're working on, because I said this would make it a lot easier for us when we're reviewing these, is they're going to build it at the bottom of this page so that as I'm reviewing them, um, I can make comments to that. And then also the approve or decline would be on that page. So we'll go through and I will say I'm going to approve. Um, but I'm going to on this one. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you an example. So if I were to hit decline on two of them, it gives me the prompts here. Now again, these are gonna be on the actual pages. But I'll just do one, and I'll just say I would be more specific than this. Maybe <laughs> I hope I will. I'm trying to be as specific as I can when I'm reviewing these, and I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna hit submit feedback and say okay okay so now as you can imagine we're gonna come out of this one you guys are gonna know this backwards and forwards no maybe not <laughs> not quite yet but you'll get there um we're gonna go here and we'll see that it needs resubmission so that um if you go to edit then you do the submit review. You can see the part that was declined and you can see the notes that are there. But again, once this gets revamped, which is what they're working on over the next two days, you'll actually see the, you can see it here, but the comments will be on that career exploration page, which will allow you then to see those comments right then and there and make any adjustments to that. So um, if we were to go into the career exploration, and we're on say one of this this one we're going to edit that and we're just going to say here um more information <laughs> right there and we're going to add that so now it's, it's added it to there and save it so if we go here you can come back and hit submit plan and it's the same process over again. So you've made you've made that um, decision to do that. OK, so that's how that is going to function. Um, and you'll have the information right there on that. And so I, I hope that, you know, showing you how we, I could just pull that over from from what you've currently have in the PWR. Uh, yeah, I know that's a lot of copy and pasting, um, but it's going to get it set up. It's going to be much more cleaner and much easier to um, enter the information when you're starting a plan from scratch because it's all drop downs and uh, especially with the this part the post-secondary programs with the courses making sure you have the right course code um, because it'll be a what a you know, what we like to call forced entry on that 
any questions, any comments, any anything at all on all of that? That was very, very quick, <laughs> but I just wanted you to see what we've been working on, what we've built, what it's going to look like. Heather, quick question on paid or unpaid internship. Why is that a part of the um, process now? And what does it make April, a difference? April, I did respond to that in the chat. That comes directly from the legislation, which requires it to be either paid or for credit or both. So that, that data has to be collected. Um, also, as I, I kind of went off the off script a little bit in the chat, and said, you know, there are times that ISBE does get questions from lawmakers about things. And that is a perfect example of something that they could get questions from lawmakers about things. I don't want to get anybody's hopes up here. That's my concern about giving this example. But for example, if a lawmaker, if you are lobbying your lawmakers and you're like, we need money to be able to offer paid internships, then they would go to ISBE and say, how many districts have paid internships? And so um, ISBE then can pull that data immediately. But the reason is uh, ISBE has got to be able to check the box that it is either for credit or paid or both. And so that's why that's asked. Heather, for districts that have multiple schools, how does that look um, for entering the data? Do we do it for each school or are we able to pick our schools? So you're going to build it at the district level and then the reporting of which school that would be um, applicable for will be at the end of the year when they do this. That's when it gets broken down into the school. So if the plans are going to be different for the different schools, then yes, you would have to build out a different plan for each school. Um, and I would probably, well, I will tell you, I would encourage you to, to for your records, to, to put the name of the school. So it could be, you know, whatever. It, ABC high school, whatever plan that would be for them. And then if you have another high school, then it's XYZ high school um, for that plan. If the courses are going to be different or if they're different um, components that are going to be different. So for clarification, as I'm making those plans, then it would be like district 211 dash manufacturing. But if it was only for two of the schools, then I would put district 211 put my two high school prefixes potentially, and then that pathway. So it differentiates. Yeah, you wouldn't, so it'll be tied to district 211. So you you could put, you wouldn't have to even, if you have a district plan, then yeah, I guess you would put it that way. If, it, if and it's separate, then a specific high school would have a plan, then you'd have to build that plan based on what that high school would be offering. If it's different than what the district plan would be. That okay. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So I wouldn't, it's not like the current system where I would put the school names in. I it would just become a district potential and then I just have to differentiate between the schools. Yeah. So the other option though is if if the majority of it is is um similar, but maybe it's the courses that are different, you you have that option to make it a district plan, but then in the courses you could list out all the courses that would meet that criteria. Because um, what we're looking at is, is the plan itself. And then the reporting, when that comes down in May, that reporting then will, um, that goes down to the school level. Okay. So you, you could do it either way. And the reporting is gonna stay what we're currently doing or is the reporting changing? Um, right now it's staying, but we're working on building that into this platform or for it to be um, a SIS upload, very similar to the, the course upload or, or things like that, or the CCRI. So we're looking into that component. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Heather, this so, is... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, this this is Thetford. I had yeah. a, just a just a quick question. I know you said earlier that the application process you had quite a few, and you was going through those. 
is 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 that something that you will be contacting us once we need to start the next process if your application yeah. was submitted and say okay yeah. you can move to the next process yes yep okay absolutely so so i have um let me think 200 and 285 districts that have sent in applications as of and and so my cutoff for that would have been um december 15th now since december 15th i have received applications from roughly 10 to 15 more districts so those districts will be getting a different message than what all of you would have gotten that says here's your access to P pwr and here's the way to get started they their um email that they'll get and I'm, i'll be working on that over the next week or so is going to be Thank you for your application. I've got you. And as soon as the IWAS application opens up, you'll get access to that. Uh, that way they don't have to do double the work for building their plans. Because uh, if their application came in after December 15th, then they did not have the intention to um, put in their, their endorsement for 24. So it gives us a little bit of a window there. So, okay. But for those that have the, the 152 districts that have <clears throat> the have sent in the form for review for the FY24 review. Yep, they'll get feedback. They'll either get feedback, they'll get the letter saying that they're fully approved with the with the um, seals and so forth. So either way, they'll be contact that way. So um, Heather, I, yes. I want to um, kind of so so a couple of things. We've got a couple of timeline things here to walk people through. Um, so if you're if you're waiting to hear back on um, your application you submitted in December in the PWR system, when you get feedback that you need to make some updates to that to for it to be approved, where will where will I do those updates if I'm one of those districts? You would want to do the um, updates in the PWR platform. In the old system. And the old system. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yes. So next question. When do we expect IWAS to be available to everybody? We're going to do a pilot with a select set of districts. Um, to make sure, <laughs> to the best of our ability, that it is functioning without any hiccups at all. Um, and, and make sure that, that it, it's um, user friendly so that we, we can cover all those bases now when we're building this out. So once that gets done and, and the input that you, you all have provided today with some of the questions like the printer, the print option and so forth, um, and just clarification on things allows me to, to you know, provide some feedback to our developers on, on things that could change and language changes and so forth. Um, so those need to be implemented. And so our target is February 15th. So, and then, <laughs> and then we need the, the PWR system will remain up yes. for some time here. Yes. So everybody can do the copy and paste that you just demonstrated today. Yes. Um, I have put in the chat that we anticipate that that kind of copying and pasting period would be this spring, this summer, maybe even into early next fall. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, correct me if I'm wrong, here's so this uh, question in the form of a statement, mm -hmm. ISBE will communicate a, a sunset date for that system. Uh, I'm going to make it up right now, October 7th, like I'm just, that's out of thin sure. air. And so okay. by September 1st, everybody it will start saying on October 7th, you have to, yeah. that system will be gone. So whatever right. that sunset date for the old system is when you're copying and pasting would need to be done. But to answer the question of, um, you know, how there's a question here from Patty, how many, roughly how many weeks will folks have to migrate their data? We're actually talking months rather yeah. than weeks for that data migration right. Uh, right. to allow you to do that. And um, you can see it's not that if you have one endorsement, once you've got it, and you wouldn't want to do it until it's been fully approved, as Heather said, because then you're you're taking the language that was fully approved with the rules and and will will function better in the new system, which is aligned to those to those rules, um, should be easier moving forward. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. 
Heather, I'm not seeing any other questions. So you know, uh, actually, so it, it, in the past, there was the student projections that were done. I think those were abandoned last year. Mm -hmm. um, but Heather, mm -hmm. do we still email the district projection of student participations or we'll just get that when we when we know how many students have earned it, correct? Correct. Right. That is no longer a requirement. That was in the very, very beginning stages so that we knew potentially um, which districts were going to issue uh, or we're looking to issue endorsements for the year. So it's my, it's changed, <laughs> as you know, and I'm, I, I, I appreciate all of your patience on that. It's changed just to make it more streamlined for everyone um, and for data keeping purposes and so forth. So, so I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm clear. How do you uh, let you know how many endorsements that we will be issuing? So <clears throat> when it moves currently, um, you have the ability to issue endorsements for any of your approved endorsement plans. So at the end of the year, I will send out a spreadsheet that has the data requirements as far as the student ID, student name, uh, which endorsement they received, um, and, and just a, a few other demographics regarding that student. Um, but that is how I will know if you've issued endorsements, because you could have an endorsement plan built and don't have any students that qualify for that endorsement. So um, that's the expectation. And when we transfer this to, to Iowa, so it would be the same. You'll have a listing on that homepage of all of the uh, endorsement plans and their status. Hopefully they're all going to stay approved and so they're good to go. So what, what would happen on our, on our end is that if we were to take a look at your submission, of the students um, and the pathways, if we notice that you issued an endorsement in an area that you weren't approved for, that, that would be cause for concern, obviously. So that's how we will know what, what um, students have issued endorsements and in which pathway. So the seals that we put on their transcripts for the endorsement, um, I thought you would email those to us in the past. Yep, that, and that's what, will, that's what will happen again, too. So once they're approved, and, and so that's the next component of this, that once they're approved in either currently, right now, in PWR, you get an email, and, and if it's um, uh, approved when it moves to Iowa and it gets approved in Iowa, you will get the email that has those seals. And that will be true for this year as well. I mean, because yes. it won't be... Yes. Will we have them in the new system before the end of the school year? We, you think? Because it opens February fifteenth. Well, the 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 seals or the plans or the plans sorry. that we had in in the PWR. You will have um, to if you if, if you move them into that. Yeah. Okay. Once it opens, then yeah. But we're gonna function again. It, we're functioning now with if you're approved, if you get the letter and you're of the official letter and you're approved, then you're you're good to go for FY24. And then really the only thing you need to do is move that into PWR. So um, it'll, you know, and then I'll just click approve, make sure that it, it matches and hit approved and then you're, you're good to go moving forward. So the other component of this that will happen, just so you're aware, um, July 1st of every fiscal year, so for every school year, um, all of your plans will open again, and you'll have an option to submit with no changes or make changes, but they'll stay, stay approved. So that's the next functionality of this. So Heather, um, we are running out of time. So I just want to um, reiterate that um, if, if other questions do come up, you know, they can access you via the office hours. Mm -hmm. um, you can you mm -hmm. can find those office hours on the ISB webpage for the uh, College and Career Pathway endorsement. So check out those times. Um, I also wanted to reiterate that we did have a uh, time change for next month's meeting. So initially it was planned for the 15th. Uh, we moved it back a week to the 23rd. And that should be reflected already in your calendars. If you have not seen that calendar invite, um, it should be there, but just wanted to um, share that information with everyone uh, before we go. Um, I also want to just um, give everyone a chance to take the uh, evaluation before you go. And um, uh, 
if there's any follow-up questions as we stay here for a few minutes, um, you can go ahead and uh, add some of those. But we are going to officially end the meeting for now. And um, if you if you have uh, more questions or or things that are more pertinent to the um, your specific school, um, I would say you know reach out to Heather during those office hours um, so that she can uh, address those. Thanks again, Heather, and thanks to the ISB team. Thanks, everybody, for all your great questions. Uh, we've got those in the chat. We will share that with Heather, uh, who will take it to others in ISB.